As the cultural and, oh, what was my title? Uh, I was the uh, manager for cultural and creative activities, that was my title. Which was basically um, how to fill their time between when they get up at nine o'clock in the morning and um, when they go to bed at four o'clock in the afternoon. So it was a program of, well, before I arrived, it wasn't, it was just willy-nilly. Um, it was a free-fall, um, and it was very badly organised. Uh, and it seemed to centre just around uh, getting them up out of their rooms, entertaining them. Uh, there was this theory that you had to entertain these people for an hour and a half before lunch, and then lunch itself, and then the afternoon activity, which used to always be bingo. Which is, there's nothing wrong with bingo, but not for seven days a week. Um, and you, it, it really was trying to, with the attitude and b before I arrived was, what do we do? I mean, the problem is, what do we do with these people once they're up? Um, and they, the other problem with it that I tried to address was, what do they want to do? Maybe they don't want to do, we're assuming that these people want to do these things, but <laughs> do they want to do these things? And the general management idea was um, to keep it neat and tidy, not just physically, that was their kind of mental, emotional, that they wanted it neat and tidy. So if anyone breaks out, it's like, oh, you know, panic, panic. Um, <laughs> particularly if a resident goes, no, fuck off, which sometimes, well, not literally fuck off, but no, I'm not doing that. It's like, oh, what do you mean you're not doing that? What do you mean you don't want to play bingo? You've got to play bingo <laughs> because it's down on the timetable. <laughs> I don't want to play bingo. Mm. They are part of the process, you know. Do they want to play bingo or not play bingo? And maybe they just need to rest and not be bothered by somebody trying to make them sing war songs or. You know, this this whole reminiscence thing, which um, they were doing a lot of reminiscence work, which has its place, but also a living in the here and now. For me, they're, they're you know, they're, they're in 2018, and I think it's important to acknowledge that they've come through the war and that they've come through huge changes, and it's, it's important to tap into that, but not as a resource continually because it's it's just boring and also it's now it's now so you know we introduced uh, someone coming in to get the on, on the internet so they could send emails for example it seemed to be very royalist in that kind of you know britain is great kind of thing um and it's, again, there's a place for that, but because they've come through that history, but it's, it's not the truth, in my opinion. It's not the truth, and people's own truths are much more interesting than the truths that we want to give them. I remember one woman, Ivy. She was 90, 98, and I had a very, very close relationship with her, and she had a very, very hard life. Um, and she was a seamstress that uh, worked a lot on the uh, gowns worn by the lords. So she was employed to work on the Queen's wedding dress. And she, she was this kind of expert, haute couture kind of beader. Um, so there was this whole big thing of give her a needle and sewing. And every afternoon she was sitting there and she never, never used it. And I said, well, why aren't you using it? And she said, well, I used to hate my job. Well, no one had asked her, you know. Of course, of course she didn't want to do it. She used to hate her job. <laughs> oh. I challenged them about the food they were having, um, the menu, the great British menu. Well, why are we having treacle sponge every Friday? Did we ask the residents what they want to have? No. 
And you, you've got all these cultures here of these people. So if we talked about one day when we could possibly have Italian food, because, you know, three of the residents were Italian. So we could do a whole thing on or, 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 tasting Italian food. They didn't like that idea because they thought it was too messy. And if we did do it, well, we did actually do it, and well, it was messy. <laughs> of course it's messy. You know, we were in the kitchen, cooking all sorts of spaghettis. <laughs> we had all sorts of cheeses and, you know. Um, we did a whole thing on um, ice cream, because it was a summer's day, and um, so we had a whole taste range of ice creams came in and they phoned up everyone in Eastbourne because Eastbourne's full of ice cream shops and um, so, you know, we had sorbets and we had a great afternoon, you know. We had cones and wafers and that brought out a lot of memories about childhood, obviously. And uh, seaside, didn't you? So it was, a, it was a job on many, many levels. The whole assumption that uh, there's a lot of assumptions going on. I mean, there's a lot of assumptions about the way people are cared for. They have to go to bed at four o'clock in the afternoon. Well, why do they have to go to bed at four o'clock in the afternoon? But why? But also, why can't they stay in bed all day? You know, <laughs> they're paying for this care. So if they want to stay in bed all day and have breakfast in bed, then give them breakfast in bed, you know? They're, they're, they're here to be cared for, not for this regime to take over. So I came, uh, came up with a timetable. So every morning there was some kind of movement class, um, something that was creative and or getting them into chair-based work. Um, and then there was uh, always an activity that was engaging, something in terms of their history. Uh, so we used to do world journeys or, or life journeys, it was called. And we used to uh, take somebody's life journey and maybe m map it out on the map itself. And so you might have made a journey, a lot of them had made journeys, some of them refugees. So we'd map the actual journey and then we'd try and recall memories of that journey, and then we'd use that as a starting point for discussion. Oh, trying to retain stuff is very, very difficult. And there is a cultural shift that has to be made, because most of the carers where I was in Eastbourne, for example, most of the carers were Eastern European. Um, so we had to embrace that story in my opinion, but they didn't quite get that. They didn't quite get what I meant by that. For the caring to be good, they need to be cared for themselves. So need to make sure that they've got accommodation, that they're dealing with the language, that they're eating well on £7.85 an hour, and that can be difficult. And why do people keep turning up in the same uniform? And then you, you discipline someone when they smell. Well, ask them. Fucking ask them, why aren't you, you know? Why aren't you? Well, because I don't have a shower in my room. Well, there you go. So you try and find them, like, somewhere that, that does have that, because you're employing these people. Or let them have a shower here. Oh, mustn't do that, can't do that. <laughs> so, yeah. So it was challenging on, on many, many levels. I was challenged back. Because I'm that kind of person. <laughs> well, I would, um, uh, I would, I would do the CQC inspections without telling the care home when they're arriving. I would have to turn up. <laughs> I think that would give a true picture of what's actually going on. That's that's the way to do it. Mystery shoppers. <laughs> you could have someone come in as a resident. Yeah, yeah, that would be yeah. That would be interesting. I could employ an older actor, come in, play a resident. Yeah. I think they're very odd institutions, care homes. 
because it's, it's, it's trying to do so many things at once. It was hard work. I mean, my God, it was hard work. Yeah. I, uh, I was there five days a week, yeah. I did make a, a, a year, well, a year and a half. Uh, I did make major changes to the, well, it's probably all reversed the moment I walked out the door, but I did. I did. I was, I was kind of proud of the work we did there. So um, would I do it again? No, I, I wouldn't do it again, though, no. No. No, I wouldn't do it again. Not, not, at, um, not at this point in my life. But, uh, no, I don't think it probably has changed, no. I mean, if I were to go back to the same nursing home, I would I'd probably find it reverted back to type four years ago. I'd had enough and that I got to the point where I kind of thought, well, that, that, that's it. That, I can't do anything more than, I, than I've done. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't like, they, they didn't like me. No, they didn't. <laughs> they, well, the, well, first of all, they thought I was aloof, which I can come across as being aloof, but they didn't realise that was a performance. So they had no sense of my way of getting through life. Mm -hmm.